I was in the process of making a video about pit bulls and I had to stop and immediately start to create a different video because I found this story to be too disturbing to put on hold. The headline immediately made me feel like I was watching a horror movie. Better yet, like I was in a horror movie. And as I read the story, it started like the feeling of watching or being in a horror movie got even more intense. And it is stories like this that prove beyond a reasonable doubt. The people who own dogs, especially these large, vicious dogs, are at least extremely brainwashed and possibly have some other mental issues at play. So allow me to share this horrific story. The headline reads, Mother forced to leave baby's body with attacking dog so she could save her older child. Right, that is the headline that shot me into a horror movie scene. It was a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, of course. She was home alone with her two kids and the dog. As I've said numerous times, when you allow a dog to be in the same home as your children, you're putting your children in imminent danger. Dogs are child killers. So they had been taking care of this mutt for four years. They adopted it from a shelter. The dog had no history of violence, not even from the previous owner. In fact, the previous owner said she had a small Jack Russell that used to attack this very pit bull. And she thought it wasn't fair to keep it, so she gave it away. So it was being attacked and was not attacking this small Jack Russell. That's how harmless they thought this mutt was. So when dog nuts hit you with this mantra that their dog has never attacked anyone in X number of years, pay them no attention, do not give credit to that allegation, not even in the slightest bit. That is no guarantee, nothing is a guarantee that a dog will never attack in the future. So I don't give a damn about your mutt's history. Don't want to hear it. She had the infant in her arm. She was sitting in the living room with her two children, had her infant in her arm. The older child was on the sofa. The mother was also on the phone with her partner. She was FaceTiming with him. So the dog enters the room. She said the dog growled and immediately attacked Daniel, the older child. So the mother got up and tried to move the dog out of the room. But she still had her infant in her arms. So as she's trying to pull the dog off of her older son, she drops her infant. Immediately the dog redirected its aggression from the older child to the infant, latched onto the infant, and started to shake the infant. You know what I call the death shake. It is totally intended to cause death, to rupture veins so that they cannot reattach or be repaired. And as the dog started shaking the infant, it was also moving around the room. So it latched onto the infant and took off, created distance between itself and the mother. So it was not standing in one spot shaking the infant. It was mobile as it shook the infant. Right? It wanted to get away to make sure it would have time to kill the infant. This is just straight up murder. A murdering machine. These creatures. They are killers. Why would you put yourself in the, I'm going to digress several times in this video. Why would you put yourself in a situation for this to even be possible? It is beyond me. She says she knew immediately that her baby was dead, right? The dog shook the baby, walking around at the same time, and she said the dog then dropped the infant. She said 
she knew immediately that her baby was dead. Right? She literally watched her infant murdered and that infant had to have been motionless and completely silent, covered in blood. That is what told her her, her infant was dead. Let me pause briefly because this is an epic point in the story. Why would you create an environment inside your home that makes it possible for your kids to be viciously murdered in a matter of seconds by a deadly creature that is wired by nature to kill? In a matter of seconds, this woman is fighting for her life and her kids. And it is the kids that are being attacked first. This is not like a killer, a serial killer who breaks into the home. They're most likely going to attack the adults first. This is a whole different type of killer. A killer that attacks the young first. How dare you let something like this inside of your home? You have to be out of your mind. Especially when you have babies and children inside the home. That should be illegal. So after she realized that her baby was dead, she tried to save her older child says the dog was still having a go at the older child. She had set the child on the kitchen table and the dog snatched the boy off the table, right? Grabbed him off the table. They said that on a 911 call, you could hear the mother as she screamed, trying to get the dog off. She managed to barricade the dog in the conservatory and had the whole, the door shut to prevent the dog from continuing to attack. So she's inside the room with her bloody toddler as the dog is at the door growling, barking, scratching at the door. Dog still outside with her infant's body. This is a horror scene. Straight, dark, gloomy, terrifying horror scene. Why would you open the door for this? Extremely traumatic situation. This is a moment when she probably reflected on the fact that her infant had no chance and has no chance. Where she's probably starting to break down from trauma of what she just had to witness. And what she is currently still dealing with. Not only did she witness the murder of her infant, the dog is still out there with the infant. So the older child... The, dog, the toddler also has to live with this memory for the rest of his life. Nothing a dog offers humans is worth taking the chance to be in a situation like this. Cops show up. They're wondering why she hasn't answered the door. They can't just come up, you know, show up and force entry. She had to shout and tell them that she had took herself and her child into a safe room. And they could not leave because the dog is still trying to attack the boy. So the cops had to force entry. When they came in, they saw the mauled infant laying face down. They say it took several officers to subdue and remove the dog. That they had to use special equipment because the dog was acting so aggressively. They said the dog was acting aggressive like that all the way up until it was put to sleep. Think about that. It went into a complete rage after going four years with no display of violence and no report of violence from the previous owner. Even said that dog was being bullied by a Jack Russell Terrier. There is nothing a dog nut can tell me about how their dog has never attacked anyone that will make me feel even slightly comfortable being within 20 feet of that worthless mutt. That's the first thing they hit you with. My dog has never attacked anyone. And one day it snapped. Four years. Remained in a rage till it was put to sleep. To allow dogs in our communities inside our homes around infants should be one of the top violations of child endangerment laws on the books. No dog should be trusted to never attack in the future. 
All it takes is for it to attack once. You don't put the life and well-being of you and your kids into the trust that you have in a deadly creature that is designed to kill. Again, it is amazing you even have to remind people of this. It should be common sense. Shouldn't one of the traits that defines a family pet be that the pet is harmless? 80 to 90 million dogs for sale here, right? I'm your dog sell, but oh, 15 to 20 million of them will bite. They're going to bite one of you. Those are st the statistics on this creature. And I absolutely believe that the majority of dog bites go unreported. That is why I say 15 to 20 million instead of 5 million, right? I truly believe one out of three to four are actually reported. I've even done stories where the news report proved that the people were about to ignore a previous bite. Nearly 30,000 each year will be literally torn apart and will need surgery to be put back together. 20 to 50 of you will be killed. In each attack scenario, the majority will be children. Do you want to purchase one of these dogs? You have to be out of your mind to purchase any product like that. If we could even call this a product, they consider dogs property. You have to be a complete maniac out of your natural mind with no common sense. It's like saying here, I have 90 million time bombs for sale. 20 million will explode. Injuries will vary. But this time bomb will help to enhance your mood. It will alleviate feelings of insecurity. For me, this was a very graphic, horrific story. And it was ultimately made possible by the adults. Several governments will allow you to purchase things that are harmful. All governments. Why purchase something that opens the door for a scene like this? I've asked this question dozens to hundreds of times and each time feels like the first time now for a parent to read a report like this and then say to themselves oh i'll take the chance anyway and goes and purchases a dog or even keeps their dog folks that is insanity in its purest and most blatant form when you talk about 800,000 people in need of emergency care treatment, that averages out to over 2,000 cases each day. The reason why we don't understand like the mentality of people who treat dogs like family, dog nuts, is because we don't humanize dogs. That is mandatory. You have to literally humanize them in order to treat them like a family member. Even if dogs were harmless, incapable of attacking people, that mentality would be cause for concern. So the fact that we're talking about deadly creatures like this proves that we're dealing with self-destructive, public endangering sociopaths with no common sense. So let me stop rambling. You've all heard this type of rant several times. Just wanted to share this story. There's nothing that you can say to help people who simply don't value themselves nor their offspring, even though they still don't have the right to put the life and well-being of their own offspring at risk and in danger like this. But because these people bring these creatures into communities, it is a community problem. It is disturbing to see the government do nothing to protect the young from this form of endangerment, but has laws to protect the young from other forms of endangerment that does not cause nearly as many injuries or deaths. So much so that they will eliminate the possibility for further injuries by completely removing the product from the shelves. You can't even purchase this. Too many kids are being injured. You don't even measure remotely 
to the number of injuries dogs are causing. Several people have asked me what I think about small dogs. To me, all dogs are dogs. You know, several infants have been attacked and killed by small dogs. I read an article, it was not long ago, last night, by the Jack Russell Terrier that had killed an infant. And in that particular article, the writer described the reasons dogs attack infants as follows. He wrote, those familiar with the Jack Russell Terriers are aware of the breed's aggressive tenacity and its inclination to attack prey objects such as squirrels, rats, etc. In some cases, a Jack Russell's predatory inclinations may also generalize to small size humans, end quote. See how he wrote that dogs generalize to small size humans as if dogs are not aware that they are mauling your baby. Dogs know full well that this is your baby. Another infant killed by a Pomeranian, one of those real small dogs, look so harmless, don't they? They are killers just like the big dogs. These small dogs are no different. Many are more aggressive. They're all child killers. Small dogs simply focus on infants. And any creature capable of killing infants and seriously injuring toddlers, those are not pets. Dogs should be dealt with for what they are naturally. They should not be dealt with based on how well we hope the owners train them against what they are naturally. And after they train the dog against its natural instinct, they then claim that the dog is normal. Now this is how they're supposed to be. Amazing how people can train a dog for hours and days and weeks and then claim that it is now normal in its normal state. That's how brainwashed people is. They just truly believe that dogs are not by nature killers. Just because you can con a mutt into sparing your life by feeding it to death. That's pretty much the relationship between dogs and humans. The owner feeds it over and over until the dog views the owner as a food dispenser. And it spares you, tolerates your presence. Just because you can do that and convince the dog to spare you does not mean it will spare your kids as well nor your friends, family, or anyone else. People are so stupid. They think the dog has a mind of a human. That if they feed it enough, the dog will view them as a food dispenser, tolerate their presence, then the dog will view everybody else in your home as a human would, as a friend of the person who has shown me love. So I won't harm them. No, they view them as a threat, competition for food, or a vulnerable target that they can attack for absolutely no reason. You can only get to this point of stupidity when you humanize the dog. And no matter how many reports like this show up, people continue and even start to humanize dogs even more. The commercials continue. The propaganda continues. It is absolute insanity. No matter if the dog is large or small, in my opinion, all world governments should work together and force the immediate extinction of every worthless mutt on this planet.